Take it from the third line up from the bottom. Third line up from the bottom. First word of the line is a dying. Last word of the line is to cashier. Okay, you with me? Cashier. Good. Give me a uh, uh, menu. Third of the line from the bottom page. Tough yud test. Yeah. Okay. Last word of the line is cashier. The middle word is vizet. Good. Vizet is my what? So on a rowing, we can see Bumukhat clearly. What can we see clearly? The cashier that went. Mom, see, I'm so, uh, when a person invents, I'm so, uh, invention, how about you, a new, when a person makes a new invention, we're not talking about an invention, you have to get a patent on it. When a person gets a new idea, the safe in his mind, Hadash, in a new idea. Okay, when a person invents a new invention with a new idea, so he which is we call it a chachma from the power of chachma. Right, a person all of a sudden just thinks 
maybe the way to, uh, to cure rheumatism is by spreading peanut butter on your ear. That doesn't make any sense. Certainly, you should be no peanut butter can cure the thing I read about. It contains a certain type of element. And I also read somewhere else that rheumatism is caused by the lack of another element, which is aroused by the same thing that has in peanut butter. And the ears are, I read in another place where it's very, very sensitive, especially if they do acupuncture on the ears. It's an idea. Oh, it gets an idea. It could work. Right? When a person gets a new idea, then Ari Hu Mitmale Onet. He gets pleasure. Boom. Boom. Right? He gets pleasure. Maybe this is six things together. This might, how many people are suffering from, from suffering from mm, rheumatism. And this would be a simple way out. Simple way out. Simple answer. He may be old. There will only close it. This is a general pleasure. The Satum. And it is, but it is closed. <coughs> because it's a general pleasure, but it's closed up. Mima because can be gal mima like the price. Can be galelo. There is revealed to him haskala chadasha a new idea. All of a sudden pops up ooh, a new idea. The end the oneg, but this is not pleasure. Mefurat. Detailed, behit rachbut, in a wide way. In a wide way, it could be that it gets a ple- big pleasure from it. it. Says, okay, what do I do now? Let's try it out. Right? How am I going to try it out? So, you know, you have to find like monkeys that have rheumatism or people that are willing to try this thing out. Meanwhile, he works on the idea. You know, really, is this the element found in peanut butter, and is the ear the, really the right place? Is this really what the problem with rheumatism is? And he works on it. And he works on it. He's thinking about it. And the more he starts to understand it, Hainu, behold, the Tashem, the just like, the Haskala, that the idea of Chachma, he is Rach only, the Nekuda, in a point, Bilvat, Kain, similarly, Hine, behold, the chachma, the pleasure of chachma, the pleasure of what's called wisdom or conception in your mind, Burak is only the derech of the kuda. It's only a little point. <coughs> Why is this? Why is again? Let, let's take a, let's take a more real example according to what we want. What we want. Here we're talking about God. What is chachma? A person, a normal person, a normal person, a normal human being who likes to watch uh, baseball or something, and he enjoys music, and he, 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 he likes to make money, he likes it when his friends laugh at his jokes, and he's together with people. He likes normal things, right? Normal things. All of a sudden, he gets an idea, he hears a lecture that God is with the Jews. Right? The guy doesn't believe in God, doesn't believe in him. God is with the Jews. That's a ridiculous idea. Well, he asks, well, how can you explain how the Jews have existed with so many enemies, with no country of their own for so long? Yeah, you know, it happened. It's all it did happen. It didn't happen. All of a sudden, he thinks, maybe something. Maybe what could have been kept? What could this power be that has kept the Jews going? All of a sudden, he gets a little flash. Maybe that's God. Right? Now, he doesn't understand anything. And it, but what? Just a little flash. Ooh. So then he starts to think about it. Maybe he had, he got a little, what do you say, a hot, he caught something. So he gets a little pleasure from that idea. Got a little pleasure. Right, but then after that he thinks, no, 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 I read that there's also the, the ancient Incas. Also, they existed from time immemorial. They say that the Incas were created like the, 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 the relics of the Incas that are more than 20 million years ago. So they also existed. The Incas also existed for 20 million Million years, they just you know when the, when the Spanish came, the conquistadors, whatever. So they they killed them off, but before that they lived longer than the Jews. <laughs> Could be. So it's not such a big deal. Then he reads and he says, no, not so. The Incas did not live that long. Nobody knows really when they started. Some people say the world itself is not even that old. Okay, that sort of wrecks that idea. But then he's got this idea: what well, my God with the Jews? 
How could it be? I mean, God is way up there. What do we care? What do we care about the Jews for? So there's all these questions in his mind that he don't. But little by little, when he starts to understand this idea, the more that he starts to understand the idea, more and more, and he says, well, you know, if God really cares about, uh, you know, the Jews, the Jews, and what did the Jews do? They didn't do anything. What do they do specially? They don't like, you know, all of them are religious, and all of them make sacrifices, and all of them do these things, and that's why God likes them. The Jews don't do anything. What do they do? Right? They make uh, bagels or something. Or what, what? They don't even, they, they don't, most of them don't keep the religion, nothing. Why would God pr- preserve them? You know, what, what for? He starts to think about, mm, maybe we don't understand what God is. Maybe this. All of a sudden, little by little, he starts to understand. The more that he understands the idea, the more his pleasure becomes a bigger pleasure. Right? Until the fact that he's even willing, he goes to shul. Now he's going to go to synagogue. Why? In order to give thanks to this God who's been watching the Jews for so long. So he gets a little sort of pleasure. It's like meaningful to him. Right? To say that God has done more for the Jewish people than, let's say, you know, Robert Kennedy... Or you know all these other people that you know that we thought did so much for the Jews, maybe God is doing more for the Jews than you know than the Zionist than the, the government maybe could be. All of a sudden he starts to think could be now. He, now when he serves God, he gets a little bit of pleasure. It, it gets a little bit of pleasure for him because he's doing something that's meaningful to him. But still, that idea of pleasure why? Because it all comes from his understanding. It's all his understanding. The more that he understands, the more pleasure and the more meaningful. But the thing happens. Now that's what he wants to say. He says, Chachma, when a person gets Chachma, he gets just a flash. So he gets a little bit of pleasure, but it's a little bit of pleasure and it doesn't last long. He says, why is it only a little bit of pleasure in Chachma, in this con- in conception, when a person gets a new idea? Kamadava, the reason is, Liot because, Dilamaila, that above. Uh, okay? Tom and the reason a davar for the, of the thing who is liot because you can put a semicolon if you want to right yeah. semicolon liot because the amila that above by God Himself God has a personality right so God's wisdom He may behold Svirat, the aspect al chachma of God's wisdom. <coughs> Bo comes the derech in a way of now here's a kabbalistic idea. Listen to this gilu jumping hamadregas from the level of keter. That chachma comes in a way of jumping from the way of keter. I'll explain this to you in a second. Kamoshe katul is like it's written quote the chachma and wisdom. May I in from nothing or from where Shemote comes out. End quote. This is a this is a sentence that I'm not mistaken from Job. You ever go read the book of Job? You read the book of Job? Huh? Eel. You ever read the book of Job? Read it in English. Very, very uh, mysterious and bizarre book. Bizarre book. It's a story. <coughs> Job was not Jewish. The story is, is that God is talking, the devil goes up to God. That's how it starts up. The devil goes to God, and the devil says to God, um, uh, the Jews are only serving you because you give them all this uh, benefit. Look at down there, right? And God says, well, look at Job here. He's my, my, my servant. He says, yeah, the reason he's serving you is because, not the Jews, I'm sorry. People serve you because you do good things for them. Here, look at Job. Job is serving you he does all, because you do all sorts of good things for him. Look, he's all rich and all this. Give him into my hands, and I'll show you that he won't won't praise you. So God says, okay. So he, but you can't kill him. So he gives gives him, puts him through the whole runner of the worst, puts him through the Holocaust. Literally puts the guy through the Holocaust. He, all of his family gets killed, and his all of his they say all of his uh, properties get destroyed, and he breaks out into boils and diseases and terrible things. And he gets friends that come over to him and say, Job, what did he do? He used to be such a, uh, you know, he used to praise all God all the time. He says, I'm still praising God. They said, ah, oh, come on, you know, let up a little bit. You know, you see that God doesn't like you anymore. So he gives, starts off with this fantastic praises of God. You know, what praises of God. And finally, in the end, God himself gives praises. So the reason it's really good, but the book is filled with all these amazing praises of what God is and 
how God does things and how God is not understandable. And one of the things it says, and this level of chachma, wisdom, where does it come from? And there was Job is saying, what do you, so I lost my money, I lost my family, I lost everything, terrible things happened to me, yes. But who am I? And where did I come from? I came from nothing. My whole being came from nothing. My whole wisdom came from nothing. Everything comes from nothing. Hashem creates everything from nothing. How can you ask questions about God? You can't complain. Everything you have is a gift. And he's explaining all these gifts that you get from God. So it says, And wisdom comes from iron, from nowhere. Now the Red here is trying to make a different point. Derech Metzia, it's in a way of like being found. Like, how do you say, like, you find something totally unexpected. Me'ayin, from nothing, liyev to something. The Derech, in a way, dilug of jumping. Okay, what's the Rebbe want to say here? The aspect of Keter, Mr. Smith, you with us? The aspect of Keter is the lowest aspect of the higher world, from jumping from one world to another, for instance, the world of Atsilus, the dimension, these worlds are dimensions, if you want to call it, the dimension of Atsilus, to come down to a lower dimension of Bria, and from Bria to come down to a lower level, or to come from the essence of God to Atsilus, to the highest world. In order to do this, there's a thing called Keter, but from jumping from Keter to Chachma, Keter, Chachma is the first of the ten spheros. We talked about this yesterday, right, Borak? And Keter is above that. So Keter is a connection. It's like the plug. In order to come from Keter into Chachma, there has to be a jump. It's a jump. According to some of things, that's the idea of the breaking of the vessels also. The breaking of the vessels. There's a Keter. Keter there has to come from a jump. From Keter to Chachma. So because there's a jump that's incomparable, so Chachma is like a little nothing. It's just... It's just a little dot. That's what I call it. Just a little something. Right? Like the, 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 the question that they ask. Right? The scientists say that the world was created 25 trillion years ago. Why? Because it makes no sense to say that this whole world evolved in just 5,000 years. It's ridiculous. The world evolved. You know how long it took it takes for a human being to evolve from a tadpole or from a, uh, whatever it is, from a protozoa? Billions of years. It's a long, long process. It's a long process. So what you say, you say, no, we Jews, we believe the world was created 5,000 years ago. What's the, what's the answer? What do you say to the scientists? The scientists say, you're nuts. What are you talking about? Look at this world. 5,000 years ago, it's no way. Right? It took that long to evolve. Said, no, no, it didn't, the world did not evolve at all. 5,700 years, that's from when Adam was born. So, oh, before that, there was a long process. No, the whole process of creation was seven days. That's it. The whole world seven days was created. That's ridiculous. Yeah, but that's not right either. That's not right. Yeah, sure. No, he's right. I know, I know there's a theory like that, but that's not right. The, the, the Rebbe says, and the Rebbe says, what's the proof? The proof is, is that when we make a, 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 one of the proofs in Judaism, when you make a star, a, a, how do you say, a, an agreement, a marital agreement or a business agreement, you write the date. The date is from the creation of the world. Right? If you want to say that the world was created, 25 billion years ago, but what, there was a time dilation, so it means that the, the, the date that you put in is not really right. It's not really a true date, right? The true date is 5,700 from now and 72 years from the creation of the world, from when God created the world. That's the, right? That's the date. So, what? No, oh, good, very good. So if that, if we say, that the days that were created, that the days before Adam well, were not really days, they were really billions of years. So who knows, who says that, that afterwards it was regular? Maybe, uh, the maybe the everything is relative in this world. No, no, actually, you're telling me that the, the modern days, they're multiplying the things that they have today, right? Yeah, but the Bronze Age was supposed to be 20 billion years ago. So. Oh, they say it was 1,000 years ago? Uh, okay, good. Anyway. Anyway, the point is, what does the Rebbe say? Look, I want to get back to the saying of Chachma. What does the Rebbe say? The Rebbe says, very simple. What does it take? How long does it, would it take to create the world? 20 billion years. Good. How long would it take to create something from nothing? 
How long would that take? Like, what's is harder? Which is harder, creating a whole world from an atom or to create an atom from absolutely nothing? What's more difficult? Huh? In our understanding, huh? to create one atom from nothing. How long did it take to for, for Hashem to create an atom from nothing? No time. There was no time before that. It took no time. So if the harder thing took no time, so the easier thing, which is you creating a whole world from one atom, right, could take even less time. Right? But it didn't. It didn't. How long did it take? What did, what did Hashem do? Hashem decided to slept the whole thing out for seven days. It took seven days to create the world. He could have created the whole world in one instant. But it didn't. It took seven days to create the whole entire world. Right? Why? Why did it take seven days? Why did it take seven days? Because there's, there's a whole Kabbalistic process. The number seven is a Kabbalistic process. Good. Let's now go back to this first second that God created everything. And ask the scientists. Good. The world is 25 billion, trillion, quadrillion years old. Where did it start? The first instant, right? Go back and back and back and back and back. Now, what was the first instant? What, what, was, what happened in the first instant? What, what, what was there? What was there? What happened in that first instant? Right, the Big Bang. Where did the Bang? No, but the, the, the Big Bang came from something. Right. So before there was the Big Bang, there must have been something to bang. Well, <laughs> there, was, there was energy. There was spirit. There was an empty space. There was a vacuum. Where did the vacuum come from? Where did the empty space come from? Where did the, 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 the matter come from? Where did the spirit come from? Where did it come from? Right? Where did it come from? So it came from a little bang. And then that bang came from a little bang. And then a little bang. And then that little bit, where did that come from? Right? <laughs> and in the end, you have to get back to the first something. something. Or, or you can say like the Greeks said, there was no first something. It just always was. The Greeks said there had to be a beginning. There's no beginning. It just always was. But that doesn't answer anything. That's not scientific. You can't say a thing like that. Right? It ends up that the scientists have faith that there was something, and it's based on absolutely zero. The, the, the scientists decry faith. They say faith is not a good thing. You can't base anything on faith. The scientists are basing everything on faith. That there was an eternal something that everything came from. Doesn't mean, that's not scientific. I said anything like that. Right? What does the Rebbe say? Jewish. The Rebbe says science is a creation. God created it with the rest of the world. Right? He created the world. How did it long to take to create the world? To create the world could have been in one second, but it took seven days. It's a big secret why God did it. That's what Kabbalah talks about. Now that first second is called Chachma. That's what the Rebbe wants to say. That first second is called Chachma. If you look in Rashi, it says, Breshis bora Elokim, as the Shemayim is always, in the beginning created Hashem, the heavens and the earth, that Breshis is Chachma. Right, that's that Breshis is Chachma. Now, what, what does this all mean? What does it mean? It means that in order really to serve Hashem, it has to be with faith. All this thing that I'm saying is not a proof of anything. It's not a proof of anything. But on the other hand, don't think that science is a proof of anything either, because it's also not a proof. Right? All science can do is give you relationships between things. How things relate. But it, the essence of science is, is that if somebody comes up with a better theory, you have to accept it. Right? You have to accept it. That's science. Science is a, the, the, a, an intellectual way to try to figure out the world. But if somebody comes up with a better explanation, you have to accept it. Judaism is not that. Judaism says we have absolute truth. Even if the whole world comes against the Jews and they prove that what the Jews say is not so, and it's a million, th no way, there's no God. God doesn't say to the Jews that what that was happened to Abraham. It doesn't make any difference. It doesn't make any difference. What anybody says, we don't listen to what science. We have absolute truth, 100% truth. If you can find in the Torah that what I'm saying is not true, that's different. Then that's different. Right? So the Torah is the absolute truth. What the Torah says, that's what we believe. Even if the whole world is against us, it makes no difference. Right? All the scientists, all the king's horses, and all the king's men, they all meet together, and they, they prove 100% it's not so. Sigmund Freud was right, and, and what's his name was right, Einstein was right, and Spinoza was right, and all these people were right. It doesn't make any difference. They all, doesn't make, they're, they're all wrong. They're all wrong. It could be the whole world is successful, like the Greeks take over the world, the Romans take over the world, the communists take over the world. It doesn't make any difference. We're not succeeding. We're losing on all sides. That's the answer. Why? Because Judaism is based on this thing which is called Chachma. What's Chachma? Chachma is a little dot, little spark of beginning. And where did this spark come from? Hashem. And it comes all the time, every single second, brand new from Hashem. 
This is totally not understandable. Chokhmah is faith, emuna. It's above understanding. It's above, that's, the essence of Judaism is faith. In the end, the essence of Judaism is pure emuna, faith in Hashem. But what? It's also, you can put this into logic also. You can explain things. It's not just like, I believe no matter what. I'll walk over, I'll, 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 off a bridge. It's a mitzvah also to put this faith into your intellect. You have an obligation to use your mind as much as you possibly can to make the world a better place. Therefore, science is a good thing. Science is good. It's wonderful. People should go to university. They should learn. But the, the science cannot go against Hashem. It can't go against Hashem. The science can just explain what Hashem has created and how to make the world into a more efficient place, a place with less disease or less anger, less confusion. Right? Because everything comes from this level of Chachma. Now that's what they're already saying. Now what's already trying to explain? Why is it that in Chachma, in, when you have a concept, you get less pleasure than in Bina when you understand it? Because Chachma is a jump. It's just a little point. Therefore, when you get a new idea, you're simulating this first little point. And the first little point is little like nothing. So that it doesn't contain anything. There's no room for pleasure there. It's a little tiny bit of pleasure you get when you get a new idea. You understand? Because Chachma is a jump from Keter. It's like the first second, the first second of creation. The first being, all that has to be is a little something from nothing. A little point, that's something. Right? That's already a little point is something. But again, that's a, that's a very big miracle. But on the other hand, it's a very big miracle. Yes, you get new ideas, very big miracle. But still, it's not much of a vessel for any really meaning or pleasure or anything. It's just a flash. Says the, okay, good, you understand what I said? It says, Chachma comes in a way of dilug from Ketz Kamosh, which is like it says, Chachma mi'ayin tiyamate, Chachma comes from nothing. But there is, in a way of Messiah, like in a way of being found, mi'ayin liyesh, from nothing to something. But there is dilug in a way of jumping. Hainu, namely, the or that the light, a keter of this level of keter, of keter means the crown, which is God's will or God's pleasure. Mitzamsem, it contracts Mitzamsem, it contracts. You have a pen, uh, uh, write, write this down. Uh, uh, man, you don't know. and there remains rock only Nikuda, a point. Shizi, which is so the end. Umedrega Acharoa, and the last level, Shibor Elyon of the upper light. And it comes in a way of a point. That's Chachma. Chachma is a little point. Therefore, the, in God's name, God's name is Yud. After that, Hey. After that, Vav. After that, Hey. Yud is just a little point. That's Yud represents Chachma. Because the name of God represents the ten spheros of God, the ten spheres of God's personality. Yud. Is Chachma. Hey is for Bina. Vav is the letter six. That's the six emotions. And the last Hey is God's speech. The Hey organs of speech, the five organs of speech. That is Malchus. That's the lowest level of godliness. Lowest, last of the ten spheros. So Yud is a little point. That's what a point. A little, a little point. That's a Yud. Behi, and it is Reshit, the beginning, Hishtal Shalut of the chain of creation. Bakal Reshid, in every beginning, Shiba, it comes, Vinakuda, and a point. Every beginning comes in a little point. That's why I said the beginning of the world. Beginning of creation from a little point, something from nothing. Asher, that, Kain, who, so it is, Bakochot, Nefesh, and the powers of the soul. Just as it is with God. That God has ten spheres. And he says, that's the secret of, of faith. God has ten spheres. So that's just like it is in our personality, this chachma, this idea of little, how do you say, as a little point, as a little point of what I call a faith or a concept, an idea, a new idea. It comes in a little point. So it is in Hashem. Hashem also has this little point. That's the beginning of creation. That's breshi. So it is in the kochot or nefesh, the powers of the soul. Chachma and Bina, Chachma and Bina, the Shneim, the both of them, Chachma and Bina, both of them, Mushrashim, are rooted 
they have their source, like we found the Koach and the power Hamaskil. That's what's called the power of Maskil, the power of awareness. Koach ha-chachma, and this power of chachma, nigilui koach ha and this power of chachma, this little point of chachma, when there is revealed the power of awareness, uba, and it comes binakuda, in a little point. So there is what's called the power of awareness. This power of awareness comes in, that's like Keter, comes into a little point that's called Chachma. That's called an idea. The Nakuda in a little point. But Koach Bina, the power of Bina, the power of Bina, which is understanding, Bo comes Bisrachvi. It be, Bina is always already wide. Understanding is much wider. It's more, I would say, personal. Chachma is like a thing that knocks you out. You get a new idea. Ooh, what did it be? The, the, the Eureka. What was it? What was the guy? Somebody sat. What, who was it? Archimedes, right? That was he sat in a, a tub of water or something, and he saw that there was a displacement. That the water displaced. All of a sudden, he understood how he could measure the mass of things or something like that. How he could measure the mass of things. He sat in water and realized, oh, now we can measure. A mass of a thing it doesn't have to go around with a, a tape or something. It just has to put in water and it displaces the water or something. Whatever, anyway, whatever. The guy sat and he got an idea, right? They say that, that Isaac Newton, I don't think this is true, the story, but he was sitting near under a tree and an apple fell on his head and suddenly he understood the whole law of gravity. Law of gravity. Right? It's a story. I, I doubt if the story is true, but it's a story. So... What, what does it mean? He sat there and he tried to figure out why does it, whatever comes up must come down. Why does it work? He sat under a tree to rest and all of a sudden an apple fell down on his head. And he thought, that's it. I got the idea. That's little, that's chachma. That's a little flash of chachma. Then after that you have to go and work it out and see, you know, how things really, the things fall in the same speed or anything. Liot to be shorsha because the source of 